So one, one other space, I know you have a lot of experiences with the angel investing. So let's say, you know, I wanted to become an, a, a successful angel investor. So I want to make sure I like, I know I've heard most startups fail. I don't want to throw away my money. How do I, how do I even begin? So, you know, I think beginning to angel invest uh, varies greatly. Let, 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 let's, let's not talk about uh, Silicon Valley. Let's not talk about being a, uh, a founder or an executive at a tech company in Silicon Valley. Let's talk about, you know, you are working at Goldman Sachs, right? right? Um, you may be a vice president at Goldman Sachs. You got some disposable income and you want to start investing in tech. I think there are a couple of different avenues. One is um, figure out what do you really want to invest in and why, right? Like start, start thinking about what a thesis might be for you. Uh, do you want to invest in something that uh, is completely different from what you do on, uh, in your day job? Uh, maybe you have an interest in music or art and you're looking for companies that are going to focus on those particular verticals, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's like, hey, I'm looking for companies that are fintech companies and building uh, solutions for finance, and I want to invest in those companies. So have some general idea of where do you want to go and what do you want to put some money in. Be very clear on, I, I, I look at it like when I used to go to Vegas frequently, I would budget a certain amount of money for myself. I'd say, okay, this trip, I'm taking this amount of money and I'm not taking any debit cards or credit cards with me. This money that's in my pocket is all I'm going to have to gamble with. That's it. No more. Right. And so it was a very strict budget that I had with angel investing. I think it's also something similar should be applied. It's just be very clear on what your budget is and what you want to do out of that. Like, so for example, if you have $50,000 that you're willing to go to the roulette table with, but you want to put it into startups, be very clear. Like, look, I have $50,000. I want to invest in five to 10 companies. Right, so you're going to invest somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars on average per company. I want to build a portfolio of about ten companies with this over the course of let's say two years, and I want them concentrated in some vertical, or I want them uh, diversified. You know, come back to your thesis and apply that that way. So you have some idea of which direction you want to go. Now, based on knowing which direction you want to go, start reaching out to. Um, um, some of the angel groups in your local city. Uh, many cities have a, a lot of angel groups. Some of them are very welcoming. Some of them, of them are very close, tight-knit uh, groups. But try to reach out, try to attend a meeting, try to see what it takes to get involved in one of those clubs. You know, go listen to pitches. You know, if you are in uh, most major cities in the world today, there's probably some sort of pitch competition or a pitch right. session happening at least once a month, I would say. Um, right? Right now, maybe they're all online, but attend some of those. Listen to like 10, 15, 20, 30 pitches. Take a lot of notes. Understand which ones do you like and why do you like them, right? Talk to some of the other people that are listening to these pitches and say, okay, what do you not like about these companies that I like? I want to understand, right? Like start really listening and figuring out, well, what are you missing about this pitch that other people are picking up on and vice versa, right? Now, when you start feeling comfortable, make one investment, right? And look, start with the smallest investment you can. If the founder is willing to take a 5K check, write a 5K check. Don't be embarrassed about saying, look, I'll write a 5K check. Most people ask me like, hey, what size checks do you write? I said, look, generally it's between five and 25K and it varies. Like if you are an extremely high risk company, I don't know you, the founders at all, it's probably going to be a five or 10 K check. If you, if you think that's too small for you, okay, I understand. Don't take it. Um, I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time negotiating valuations or anything like that. Like it, it's an early stage company, simple, safe. Yeah. Just figure out what the cap is. Whoever's writing the largest check, whatever cap they're comfortable with, fine. That's generally okay. If, unless it's obscene. Right. right. Like someone says, hey, you know, we're going to put money in a 20 mil cap. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys don't even have a product. A 20 mil cap. Where's that coming from? But anything is, that's reasonable and comparable to what kind of deals are happening right now is fine. So I think, you know, start. I, I see angel investing as 
a team sport. I don't see it as a solo sport. So try to build a team around you, or at least try to get into a team. AngelList is, in my opinion, a really good way to start educating yourself. You can back a couple of syndicates. Don't go crazy. I have people, I see people backing 20, 30, 40 syndicates and done zero deals. You know, at some point, you're just not going to be accepted into any more syndicates. Try to find two, three, even 10 syndicates that you think you might write at least one check into. And most of the syndicates have a low enough threshold where you can do a thousand dollar check. So, you know, if you've got $50,000 budgeted, you might say, all right, I'm going to do five deals on uh, AngelList for a thousand dollars a piece just to learn, right? Like if you spend $5,000 taking a course somewhere, think of this as like, hey, this is $5,000 I'm learning and I actually might make some money off of this at some point, right? So I would say, do that, take $5,000 and say, I'm gonna put this into the five best deals that I see and maybe put a timeline on it and say like, if I don't do six, five deals in six months, something's wrong. I haven't either backed the right syndicates or I haven't um, filtered out the deals properly. I haven't given it the due attention that it needs, something is wrong, right? Like there's so much great deal flow. Uh, if you're in the US or even in India on AngelList, you can easily, uh, do syndicate deals. So like I've done a bunch of syndicate deals in India and in the US, even though I get a lot of direct deal flow. I've done a bunch of syndicate deals because it's like, look, you guys do the, all the paperwork, you do all the hard work, and I'll just piggyback off of you. Uh, if a deal that comes to me that I really, really like, then I'll do it direct. Um, so I've been doing both. Um, it does require time and you you really do need to be honest with yourself about why you're angel investing, right? Like, are you angel investing because you think it's cool because other people are talking about it? Um, or are you angel investing because you think there's an opportunity uh, to support entrepreneurs to do something that could potentially be game changing. So be very clear on why you want to do that. And that will drive a lot of things that happen along the way, I think.